Four Nights of the Apocalypse chapter 115 has released, and this was honestly probably one of my favorite chapters in a while because honestly, it, it was just Lancelot's time to shine in this one single chapter. I had a smile on my face the entire time. And this proves once again, without a shadow of a doubt, that Lancelot is still my all-time favorite character from this series, bar none. And when we get some good action in this chapter, we do actually get the official setup for the next fight. And I am all but excited for it. Before we get into the video, only 26% of the people that actually watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos, it really helps and it shows you guys like the content on my channel and it, and it encourages me to make even more content and keep following this series on a weekly basis. Now with all that out of the way, let's get right into the chapter. So chapter 115 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, titled The Battle of the Albion. Now I'm just gonna say flat out, this was not much of a battle, more just Lancelot dicking around for the sake of it. And we'll get into that when we get into that. But first here's like the cover image of just the giant Albion just walking across this giant field of miasma. The way it's drawn really shows that it's in some sort of thick mist to the point where you can't even see a good portion of the detail in that whole giant golem. But the chapter starts off with us seeing the Albion and everyone commenting on whether or not they've seen the Behemoth yet. And since it's that, and since it's supposed to be that big, they probably got, should have gotten a really good view of it at this point. It's then that, that Percival's stand ability just manifests itself. I'm going to keep calling this thing a stand, you cannot tell me otherwise. Just says that it's not that it's nowhere, but they've already be, found themselves on top of the Behemoth's back. And states that Percival shouldn't remember since he's been there before. And Percival just calls his stand the Jiggly Me, which even that thing just says, please don't give me any weird nicknames. But it goes on to say that the Behemoth is, uh, sees the Albion as more or less something like a flea to it, which just, based off of what we've seen from the, just one singular panel with just the landscape, just shows that how massive this creature is. And it's just something to really think about. How can you fight something that might actually be the size of a whole mountain range or a continent? That'd be, that, that's something that's really interesting considering that the Albion's already like m like maybe like 50 or 100 stories tall. I don't know the exact height, but for that to be considered nothing but a fleet to that thing, that is something to think about. But Donnie just says that the door is probably somewhere around there, but On brings up that there's such thick miasma that they don't even know where they can even look. But Percival Stan and even Lancelot notice something. They've got a fly latched onto them and tells everyone in the cockpit to brace for impact. As Lancelot controls the Albion's hand and just smacks the top of its head with it, everyone just falters down to the ground from the impact. Lancelot laughs and says, looks like they got company. As we actually see, a bit of the Albion was cut out and as everyone's wondering if these are the Chaos Knights that have found their way there, how come they didn't sense it? They most likely hid their magic power, but Lancelot brings out the fact that they were so focused on hiding that they left their minds wide open to be read, and that there's about six or seven of them, as we all know. And so we actually see the seven Chaos Knights peeking out of the hole they made on the giant golem, as the knight with the bird helmet asks if they're onto them, as one of the other knights just says, I thought we hit our presence well, but it looks like we had a tricky foe. As we actually get to see in the next panel, as they notice, as they look up, the Albion's finger is being plopped down at the hole that they made, if we literally see a try and just smush them through the hole and turn them into mincemeat, as Lancelot's using it to try and flatten them in that instance. It's then that Maltlatch commands the dragon thing that they rode on, which is called an Arc though, to destroy the Albion. And so it begins to launch a bunch of attacks on the Albion, as it then fumbles backwards, as it, there does seem to be some damage placed onto it. But Lancelot gets really excited and says that it's not too shabby and that it's a worthy a foe for the Albion, as Don is just questioning how does how is this situation in and of itself considered good? Lancelot has the Albion turn towards the dragon and launches a fist towards it. The dragon swerves around through the fit on the fist and launches another attack right on the Albion once more. Lancelot is wondering if they have any anti-air attacks as he's trying to command the Albion to shoot the thing down, but realizes they can only take commands in a demon language, 
But first of all, then says shoot in that language as the Albion then launches a giant fireball attack right at the dragon, blasting it. As Percival realizes they can do that, Lance just laughs and just tells Percival just to keep going, and Percival keeps up the barrage with multitudes of attacks. As we see in a two-page spread, just a massive, massive explosion that could probably wipe out an entire city block or an entire town, which is honestly kind of hilarious, as everyone's wondering that that was kind of a bit too much. Tristan scolds Lancelot, stating that he got a bit too carried away, as Lancelot actually has a chibi form and just like very giddy is like, whoops, I just had way too much fun with that. Honestly, it's just nice to see Lancelot, the most serious character in this whole group, who takes every situation at a critical value, tries to discern every possible angle of any battle, and coaches everyone through any particular situation to just dick around and pilot a giant mech just for the hell of it, which is honestly hilarious. Whenever it comes to these types of series, you forget that a lot of these characters are teenagers, they're kids, so it's just nice to see them actually have some fun for a change with the literal war that they're fighting right now. Also, again, Lancelot, my favorite character of the series by far. The Chaos Knights are just in awe of the destructive force that just attacked them. We see a silhouette come out from the from the giant dust cloud as the Albion, after dealing being dealt a ton of damage, begins to fumble backwards and is going down, and Lancelot is trying to keep it up. And it's revealed that this beast is a beast from Purgatory, as we kind of figured, and apparently it's called the Servant of the Purgatory Lord, and it's said to prefer living in, har in the harshest layers of Purgatory, and the light from its eyes raises the earth, and its armor reflects all magic attacks. And really quick, just want to say, Purgatory Lord, are we getting like some subtle pieces of world building that there is actually a ruler of Purgatory outside of the Demon Lord who was stuck there for 3,000 years before the Sins defeated him? I'm just saying, if Nak was putting in some subtle world building and if we're going to go to Purgatory again this series and potentially see what happens there, maybe see the ruler, I'm all for that. That would be really cool. How anyone would survive there would be incredibly bizarre, but hey, I don't mind revisiting it if we get to explore it a bit more. But Motledge begins to say that they may have a neat little toy, but it can't match up with this dragon. Nazian says they're outclassed as Lancelot just grabs some arrows from his sleeves as Motledge above the Albion does a command to try and attack the stomach where everybody is located. But it's then the next page, the dragon is completely eviscerated as Motledge is in complete and utter disbelief. As Lancelot just states, Stomach Ray, the Albion's most powerful attack, and nothing can stop it. As no one is fooled by this, as Lancelot literally just uses bow and arrow to just completely destroy the dragon with ease. And honestly, again, I just like how he's still kind of just having fun with this whole situation. It's just, it's just nice to see the serious character of any series just lay back and have some fun and mess around, even in a serious situation. And for the third time this video, Lancelot, all-time favorite character of this series, Bar none, I ha will have no discussion over this. Lancelot just says, what? No. This is the Albion special move doubling down on his whole roleplay that he's doing right now. Is Donnie just like, yeah, whatever, man. As, well, as Nazien's comments on the fact that Lancelot just hates losing, it seems, and not just calling Lancelot a kid, but Percival hears a bizarre voice in his head as he turns around, wondering if someone was trying to talk to them. But then the Albion stumbles and begins to fall over with everyone on its body. The Albion then falls flat on its back, with the Chaos Knights going onto the ground, breaking their fall. Moltlech looks up, and on the last page of the chapter, we see the Chaos Knights looking up at the four Knights of the Apocalypse and their allies, as it sa states, So it's you, huh? The dogs that have been sniffing around for us. As Lancelot, in the lead, as honestly he should be, stares right down at the seven chaos knights ending the chapter so we finally got the full-on setup for the real fight all the preamble out of the way and now we're going to actually get to see what these seven knights are capable of against the four knights now here's the thing i don't think this is going to be a relatively tough fight for everybody it is seven versus eight they have one person above the rest of the knights since gawain has been taken out so I do think some of these are going to be like doubling up on specific characters when they actually get the fight. I do think we're going to get like maybe two, three chapters of just this fight, maybe five max, depending on how things go, because we are on the bag of the behemoth. So things are probably not going to go as easily as they seem. 
I kind of blew through this chapter because, again, not too much happened. It was mostly just action and everyone and uh, Lancelot just having fun with the Albion trying to get rid of the, the Chaos Knights without really doing any real effort or actual fighting. And him just having fun along the way. Which just, again, I'm just gushing over, the, over his character the entire chapter. But it's just nice to see him actually have some fun. And honestly, I can't wait to see how everyone's training went. I know nothing really big happened before the time jump past the full week, but I am confident that this fight will actually solidify a lot of the fights in this battle. I'm already going to predict that uh, Rosebank is going to fight on and maybe a Soul Day. I don't know what the other guys are going to do. Moltlet's probably going to fight against Lancelot and Percival, if I have to be honest, or Percival by Moltlet since it's his uncle. Or it'll just be Lancelot versus Molich because they're the leader, basically the leaders of each group. Either way, I'm hoping to see more of Lancelot fighting instead of just utterly destroying them. Or maybe Lancelot will just be a play the general and just be the tactician in this and just assist everybody from a similar distance in order for everyone to grow stronger in this fight. I honestly can't wait to see and I hope Tristan gets some time to shine because I do feel like he's kind of been skipped over in this arc. And he does deserve a bit more time in and an arc where it was literally his father's home and he's kind of been skipped over in favor of Percival, which I'm okay with, but I just feel like we should have gotten more time to sh more time towards Tristan as it would help with his whole character arc. But yeah, that was more or less everything that happened in this chapter. The fight has been set up. Lancelot was dicking around in this entire uh, conflict with the just wanting to pilot a giant ro mech. And... Yeah, that's basically it. We saw Lancelot just eviscerate Purgatory Beast like it was nothing. Not too much happens. Percival Stand comes out whenever it wants to now, and nothing else really happened. I liked the chapter, it was fun, and I cannot wait to get to the real meat of this arc with the main battle now beginning. But what did you guys think? Leave your thoughts, opinions, and theories in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help, and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel. And I am planning to make some more videos on Fortnite's The Apocalypse outside of chapter reviews, so look forward to that. But with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you all have an awesome day.